Hey guys, my name's Josh. Today I'm at Viking Lounge Mastering and I'm going to talk about how to set your master limiter. This is not a dark art. You don't need to overcomplicate this. It's actually very simple and I'm going to explain it quite simply in this video. So my name's Josh. I'm a mastering engineer and I like to make audio related videos helping you make better music. So if you like that kind of thing, press subscribe because I'm going to be posting more and let me know of anything else that you want me to explain. Enough of that nonsense, let's get into the video. So how do you set your master limiter? So let's be clear, the limiter is the last process on your master bus. You don't want anything after that. A limiter is a very high ratio compressor that stops the audio going over a certain point, otherwise known as the ceiling. So why do we use one? It's because we want our music up to a consistent or acceptable level to be used on streaming services, CD or vinyl. They basically just help make our music louder without exceeding a certain point. Now what limiter should you use? So I will say it doesn't really matter but it kind of does matter because every limiter has different sounds so I'd recommend trying a couple out and picking one that you like the sound of or picking a couple and then using the most appropriate one for whatever track you're working on. So now I'm going to talk about how to set the limiter so, and I'm going to assume that this is for online distribution like Spotify or iTunes just because that is where most music is listened to, consumed, distributed these days. So today we're going to be using a track by Ballast and it's featuring his sister Evie. Thank you for letting me use the track, I really appreciate it. It's called Spiders Have Feelings. Also at this point if you haven't watched my What Is Mastering video then you should probably go do that because I explain in a little bit more detail what my thought process is during the whole stage. But yeah, this left instance of Reaper is the mix. So this is the version that was sent to me. So this one here is sent through the analog chain and through the equipment and then it's recorded back into instance two here. That's why we have two. So this is the limiter I'm gonna be using for this track and I've really been liking this one. It's very transparent. Um, it has a few little cool options. So here is the output ceiling. Some limiters call it a ceiling, some limiters call it an output, like I know FabFilter calls it an output, but Waves calls it a ceiling, I believe. But yeah, you can see the output is set to minus 0.3. And why is that? It's because when audio is pushed up to a certain level and there are consistent parts that are pushed up that high, sometimes there can be peaks that go slightly above it called intersample peaks. That's a basic explanation. Pretty much all you need to know is you need to leave a little bit of wiggle room for intersample peaks. Now I know some people don't really worry about setting that ceiling to avoid intersample peaks but I don't really understand that like why wouldn't you avoid them if you could? Anyway. So this limiter also has a few little fancy options called oversampling, which I won't get into today, but I've got it on the maximum quality of oversampling, um, as well as a clipper, which I'll explain in another video. So on this limiter, we also have a release setting and this just changes the sound or how long the limiter will return back to zero. So usually a really fast release will more often than not result in a sharper sound because there's just less limiting happening and it's returning to zero a lot snappier. But as soon as you start to slow this down, then it's slowing the whole thing down, which makes it sound smoother. So depending on what your mix sounds like, will determine where you set this. So three common settings I often use is as fast as it will go. That's if I want it to sound snappy. Auto, which kind of gives it a nice gluey, flowy feel, which can suit some songs. And sometimes if I want it still snappy, but I just want to soften it a little bit, I'll often just slow it down a little bit. So after I've listened to the master and I kind of know what I'm going to do, I then gain it up to a point where there's no limiting being done, but it's just before that point. Make sure you play the loudest part of the song and then bring this up until there's a little bit of limiting and then back it off until there's none. I can So you can see there that little red light that came on that meant 1 dB of gain reduction and I just brought it down a dB-ish from there. And that's where I'll kind of start my EQ or compression if it needs it. Because I often like to achieve the loudness from EQ and compression which I want to do in another video as well with Paul because he's a genius. So this is the point where I would 
do my EQ and compression and then when I'm kind of happy with how the master's sounding and I'm almost ready to finish it off, I'll then bring this up again and maybe apply 1 to 2 dB of limiting. I wouldn't really go any more than 3 in most cases. I'm not going to say all cases because there might be a scenario that sounds good. But you just have to use your ears and use as much limiting that you think sounds good. To me, that's usually only 1 to 2 dB, sometimes less, sometimes nothing. So just use your ears like, what do you want this limiting to achieve? Limiting has a sound and just like any other process in mastering, you have to do what will make the song better. If limiting more does not make the song better, then don't do it. But for this, I found that 1 to 2 dB actually sounds good, so I'll do that now. So yeah, as you can see, 1 to 2 dB, and I thought the auto sounded cool. Um, by the way, we're listening to the mix still, this isn't the mastered version, but I'm just using this as an example. So you see that we have 4.7 dB added, so it's pushing into the limiter that much, and then it's about 1 to 2 dB of gain reduction. So then once you've set your limiter to where you like it, it's then a great idea to check how your song will sound on iTunes. And to do that, we use this thing called AU Round Trip ASE. And you can flick between the source and the encoded version, as well as you can see if there's any clipping in the encoded version, which is super handy. Like, you don't want iTunes to change the sound of your masters if you can help it. If you do it right, you will often not even notice a difference between your mastered version and the iTunes encoded version. So I'll show you if I bring my output up to zero and then I apply a bit more limiting, you'll see that it's clipping in iTunes. So as you can see that there's a lot of clipping um, and that's why we set the output to minus 0.3 and apply just as, not, just as much limiting that actually benefits the song. You don't need to crush your music anymore. Now Apple actually recommends that you have this at minus 1 dB and I put it at minus 0.3 dBs. But their recommendation is just to avoid this kind of clipping. So if you can avoid this kind of clipping with it at minus 0.3 then technically you've just got a little bit more headroom. So the main point is don't crush your songs so they sound bad on iTunes. Now sometimes if you do want to limit a song more and it does sound good with more limiting, just bring it back until it stops clipping and you'll be sweet. Usually I don't have to do that because I'm not really crushing songs for streaming. Now to summarize this video, how do you set your master limiter? So bring it up, bring your track up to a suitable level where you can work at, apply all your necessary mastering processing like EQ and compression, get it to sound as good as you can, and then use the limiter and just apply as much gain reduction that you think sounds good. For me, that's usually around one to two dB, sometimes no limiting, sometimes more limiting. And the main point of this is to just use your ears and limit to where you think sounds good. You can change the tone of the limiter or you can use different limiters like L2 here, Fab Filter, or this Hornet one we've been using. They all have different sounds, they all sound different, so choose one that suits your track. Once you have enough limiting that you think sounds good, then check how your music is gonna sound on streaming services by using ASC Roundtrip or even New and Master Check is really good. You can see our sounds on YouTube and Spotify, I believe. And then if you do find that this is clipping, then you can either apply less limiting or lower the ceiling a little bit. Both have different sounds and you can choose which one you would prefer to do depending on how you want your track to sound. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something new. If there's anything else you want to learn about mastering or even recording and mixing, I'd love to make videos on it. So let me know in the comments as well. Thanks to Ballas and Evie for letting me use their track, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.